about the journey you've had in turning Burnt Mill around so far. Did you come into the school with a plan in mind to do this? Um, so when I arrived in January 2010, the school had achieved its lowest results ever. There were 27% five to c including English and Maths. Um, and really, the plan was that by July 2013, that the school would be outstanding and that every single subject um, would achieve above national averages. So that was the plan. Um, and the most important thing, I think, was that you ha I actually believed that that was achievable, that young people of... Harlow, if they were taught by the best teachers, um, would actually achieve results. And this July, we got 76% by Red Sea and Clean English and Maths, which is, um, it put us as one of the top schools, one of the top comprehensives nationally, and also one of the top comprehensives in Essex. When I first started, there were lots of, there were lots of quick fixes that you had to do, because the year 11 at that time, I, I, I had a term and a half with them, and, and again, you knew that those young people only had one chance. So there were lots of quick fixes, lots of interventions that we put in place. Um, however, it was more of a long-term plan. I knew that at the end of the three years, we would become outstanding, and that children in Harlow would be achieving better results than most other schools nationally. Um, and, and the plan was that, I, that only the best teachers would be in front of our students. So people ask me, has the, have the, has the population of the school changed? Have I been one of those heads who's just excluded lots of children and brought in bright children? The actual children have not changed at all. What has changed is the staff that we've employed. Um, and we only employ teachers who are good or outstanding because we believe that every single child should have a good or outstanding teacher teaching them. So the plan was that we made sure that all our staff were good or outstanding. How um, is it to you that you meet these kind, of, these kind of targets or is it really about helping the pupils achieve their best? Yeah, so people ask do we chase a headline figure, we never chase a headline figure and one of the reasons why we are so successful is we um, focus on every single child. So myself and my senior leadership team every single week we go through the data of every child in year 11 and year 10 to check that they're on track um, and if they're not on track we have a team of people, mentors, um, counsellors and private tutors who actually we put interventions in place and we utilise their skills to make sure that children can get on track. Um, and actually we never we, we have a sort of an idea about what our headline figure will be but really it's just very focused on each individual child. Um, I know every single kid's target grade. I know whether they're meeting that target grade. Um, and that means that if the head teacher knows that, every single member of staff needs to know that as well. Um, so I think that's why we, we've got the results we have, is because we, we really don't miss out on any single child. We, we say no child left behind, and that's our, our motto, because they only get one chance at it. Okay, um, the school at the moment has got quite a big web presence. Um, I know you've got Twitter accounts for the different sectors within the school. Yeah. Um, you've got your blog. Um, is this something that you're actually engaging the young people in as well, teaching them the, about the web, about social media, and how important do you feel this is? Today? Yeah. So for us, it's not just about getting GCSE results. One of our roles is to make sure that our children have um, experiences that will make them be able to compete in the 21st century. In fact, our new plan is that by 2016, that we offer a world-class education so our kids can compete in China and India and America and anywhere they want to go in the world. So one of the things that we've invested in is technology. Um, we have iPads for the children. Um, we encourage our senior leadership team to have their own blog. You might have seen that on the website. Um, and, and for us, we know that social media is incredibly powerful and actually that's going to be the way that young people communicate um, in the future. So we do invest a lot, actually, in use of technology. Going to the future again, um, obviously Parsons has got its big shiny new building now. Um, the Burnt Mill <laughs> building, as, as much as it's a classic in the town, is looking a bit worse to wear. Are you hoping at some point down the line you are going to get a new building? Is there any... Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to get a new build in the country, um, <laughs> given the cutbacks in education. However, what we, as an academy, we actually um, have the opportunity every year to put in bids to the Department for Education. Um, not last academic year, 2012, we put in a bid and we were given half a million pounds, which we invested in um, improving the classrooms in English and maths. Um, we're going to put in a bid this year to transform the science labs. So we're doing a lot of work on the interior, making sure that it is fit for the 21st century. 
um, the outside we're sticking a few pictures on to make it look a bit nicer but actually the structure is fine um, and actually I would argue that although the brand new builds are lovely um, this building is still fit for, for purpose for young people and actually we offer all the same facilities that the brand new builds have. So if you look at any of the brand new builds, they have sports halls, they have gyms, we have that. All the brand new builds do not have swimming pools and we have a swimming pool. Um, and all the classrooms tend to be the same size and actually I would argue that footage for young people has been reduced over time. So actually our classrooms are probably bigger than a lot of the schools with the new build. So we're quite happy with the building, but we are aware that we need to sort of freshen it up, in particular the science labs.